what happens to the predators is likely eventually to happen to us and be a reflection of what's going on down here. So they're like an indicator species. So they'll tell you about the health of the entire ecosystem. Founded in 1990, the Cascades Raptor Center focuses on saving, rehabilitating, and releasing birds of prey. Their focus is on healing the birds while educating the public on the hazards raptors face and how to minimize these threats. The birds in the center's care have either been injured or infected. Their lives are dependent on how severe their condition is and the care that they receive. Some make it, some we have to euthanize, some pass away. And then these guys get rehabilitated, usually they get treated as long as it takes, they go through surgery, they go through training, whatever it needs for them to restore their health. Then they relearn basically flying properly and then they get released. The categories of the injured birds, which are uh, car accidents, vehicle strike, collisions with vehicles, window strikes, they hit windows, they get tangled in fences, particularly barbed wire, caught by cats. They're really, really susceptible to being caught by people's houses, house cats, and that's fatal. Electrocution, lead poisoning, and another one which I, which I'm personally very, very, um, very, very upset about is uh, rodenticide. We saw over 400 birds come through the clinic last year. While raptors face many dangers, there are solutions that can be implemented and steps taken to prevent these deadly environmental hazards or assist an already injured bird. Action can be taken. So if a person were to hit a red-tailed hawk, um, stopping uh, throwing a towel around that animal or a blanket or a jacket and bringing it into a hospital is going to really increase its chance, its potential uh, for release back into the wild. In a state like Oregon where we have so much native beautiful owls and, and birds of prey, it needs so little effort like hanging up nest boxes or setting up these tea perches in your field where the, where the uh, red-tailed hawks can perch. It needs so little effort to attract wild predators to kill uh, rats. They are so efficient. Additional solutions include keeping your house cats inside, moving plants away from windows so raptors do not assume there is a continuation of their habitat within a home and attempt to fly through the window, hunting other animals with bullets made of alternative materials to lead so that scavenger raptors do not ingest the bullets from a kill and suffer from lead poisoning, and finding a replacement for harmful pesticides in farm fields. The consequences of these hazards are extensive and reduce the possibility of a raptor ever recovering enough to be released. They have to be able to survive. You know, they need to be able to hunt, you know, I mean, these guys are consummate athletes. I mean, they literally need to be in perfect shape. A small percentage of the raptors at the center end up actually meeting the requirements for release. Some raptors are too weak or injured to continue being successful hunters on their own. According to Dr. Stryker, in many cases, the most merciful action that can be taken is euthanization. When they come in and they are so badly damaged that there is no doubt for you that you know that you look at this wing and that's, that's bone sticking out and, and it's set, broken in several spots and then it's sad. But it's not, it's sad, but it's not difficult. This baby western screech owl fell out of its nest and sustained a severe neck injury. The staff fed him by hand, built him a custom neck brace, and gave him medication in attempts to help him recover. After a few days in the clinic, he was still unable to stand on his own, and the staff discovered a fracture in his wing. This little one's injuries were too severe, and his recovery was not progressing. More than 50% of the raptors taken in either die of their afflictions or are humanely euthanized.
When a raptor does meet the requirements for release, the center's team acts hastily to return it to its natural habitat. This western screech owl was able to make a full recovery, and the raptor center estimates that her chances of survival are equal to what they were before she was injured. She was given the opportunity to live the life she was intended to live. Exceptional care and tremendous effort was given in order to provide this owl another chance. Hundreds of raptors are impacted by human-made environmental hazards every year. Not all of them are as lucky as her. To me, they're just important. It's just who they are. The world is not going to be the same if we lose all of our predators. The ability to see these guys is just phenomenal. <laughs>